this is one standard internet sized sizing banana. Here it is in front of an Ender 3. A Sobel SV06. Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. Cheaty X plus 3. But here, 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 it is in front of the Mingda Magician Pro 2. This is one large printer. So the first three printers we looked at all have a uh, bed size of somewhere in the 220 to 240 by 240 range. And, you know, a cubic volume, you know, that'll somehow complete that. So, you know, 250 somewhere in that area. The Chi Detect is bigger, 280 by 280. But this, this is massive. This Magician Pro 2 is 400 by 400 by 400. And not only is the bed size massive, but the printer itself is large. I apologize, I do not have a metric tape measure or anything to measure metric that big. But that thing is 19 inches wide. This is just the build plate by 20, not the build plate, the, uh, the base plate for the printer. 26 inches long, and I measured yesterday, it's 27 inches high. It's, it's massive. Look, I mean, just look at the thickness of the build plate alone. So, again, this is the Mingda Magician Pro 2. And I, I've heard of Mingda. They've been around for a while. Make bed slingers. I'm, I'm not sure if they make uh, resin printers or not. But uh, this printer is their, I believe, their largest size. And it is a, a continuation of their Magician series. And um, it has some really nice design aspects to it, honestly. And uh, that's a good thing. Because otherwise we are just in a race to the bottom with people making, you know i3 clones and then bigger i3 clones so while this you know carries the same shape and form factor and all that it is in fact somewhat different let's take a look at uh how this thing went together and it was incredibly easy so the printer arrived with the gantry of course you know not connected to the bed and the print head was not connected to the gantry and that was it that was the entire uh, installation uh, except for the uh, spool which just snaps on so to mount this there are and it's very hard to see down in there three screws on this side and uh, some on the other side but now take a look at this this is what makes this thing really unique and one of the great design features I was talking about here we take a look at this ribbon cable, which comes down to here, and then it splits off into the tool head cable. We can follow that all the way down, right down to here, where there's a, a standard ribbon cable connector on the end that plugs through this mounting block and into the PCB in the base plate. Really nice. There's the other Z motor, and here you can see these angle brackets that are commonly found on the larger size printers just to keep things nice and stiff. So we do have uh, dual Z motors, but there is no uh, synchronizing belt for them. They are, uh, they are separate, which is not a problem. Here we have the large, large metallic build plate or base plate which is great for keeping everything in place because even though this is not a really fast printer that's a large bed to be moving about 
and without a, a large heavy base plate to keep things in place it could definitely be uh, shimmying all over the desktop so that is a really nice feature another nice feature down under here we have three different ways to connect to a USB-C an SD card and a USB stick very nice now when I set this up and if you've ever set up 3d printers or you know any kind of electronic equipment you get from overseas that has a power supply you generally have to switch the power supply to the correct voltage for uh, your area and if you don't especially in a 3d printer there can be some issues but <clears throat> I was unable to find a switch on this. There was nothing in the assembly instructions that mentioned it. So I have uh, contacted Mingda and asked them uh, whether they preset it, you know, if it's internal and they preset it prior to shipping, or they just use a, uh, you know, a, a single voltage power supply depending on where the units are going. So, again, another nice feature. They've really thought through this. Everything is very nice. I mean, even take a look up here onto the top where the spool holder is there. You can see there's another one right here. So you can snap the spool holder on either side. You can get another spool holder, put it on there, have two spool holders, switch between them very easy. Now you'll notice this is a direct drive extruder. So the filament comes from the spool directly to the extruder and is squeezed from the extruder directly through the hot end and out. So this makes this perfectly uh, a suitable machine for printing things like TPU where a Bowden tube can be a problem because it's like, you know, TPU is so soft it's like pushing a rope. It's much easier to pull a rope than it is to push one, right? Now one thing I notice here, in the, uh, they call this the Easy Connect tool head, and it really is. Again, it connects with the ribbon cable connector on the side. The, uh, the cooling fans do seem a little anemic. And another curious decision was this large format printer shipped with a .04 nozzle. You would think they would ship with an 06 or an 08 because that is what most people are going to use on them, but they didn't. Again, I, uh, I asked for some clarification on this, and if I get some prior to the video being published, I'll be happy to uh, bring that up. So right now we are doing a... Uh, a benchy boat, a rather large benchy boat, uh, in appreciation for our very large printer. And you can see down here, it has been printing for four hours and three minutes, and it looks like we are only 20-some percent done, so it's going to take a while. Let's look at a couple things I printed already. All right, here's the first print I did, and this came off of their card. It's an angel, so it's a large angel. She is about 12 inches high. Printed in a plain yellow PLA, and it has uh, supports. I left this one on so you can see directly out of the box how easy it was to remove the support. So. Again, this is something they slice, so of course it's going to be nice, but you know, whoever did it, did a really nice job. Um, you don't see any stringing. Uh, the temperatures look correct. Everything looks very, very good. As you would expect from something they did. So I did something on my own. I made an incredibly large calibration cube. These are generally 20 centimeters. Mine is 100 centimeters. And I'll tell you, the PEI sheet on the print of that printer is great because when I pulled off my calibration cube, I pulled the bottom. <coughs> Pardon me. I pulled the bottom right off of it. Other than that, and that's my fault, it came out pretty good. We got a little bit of under extrusion here, and that is my fault. That is not the printer's fault. And I'll tell you why. This printer has adjustable speed. I turned up the speed. I probably should have turned up the extrusion percentage as well, and I didn't. 
So that is the end of uh, every layer. Then the new layer starts here, you know, in the corner. So it's obviously slowing down the extrusion there. And the top layer, we have a little bit of stringing in the hole. And you can see some of the supports through the top layer, which is not an uncommon thing. And that can be fixed, you know, with a couple of settings in the slicer. But other than that, this thing did great. This took um, three, and a, three hours and about 45 minutes to print. So included with the printer was the uh, SD card, which is in the printer being used right now. A set of Allen wrenches from, looks like 1.5 to 4 millimeter. A uh, little wrench, uh, it's like 8 and 10 millimeters, yeah, 8 and 10 millimeters. This sheet that was on top of the box about how to unpack. An extra .04, looks like a MK8 nozzle. Some sample filament. And a very brief manual. Of course, all of the good stuff, you know, is found on the SD card. Okay, we are looking at the controls now as the printer is printing. And you can see we have uh, the file name up here. Pause button, a stop button. A position button that's telling us our X, our Y. Uh, interesting, nothing telling us our Z position. Oh, there it is. 34.72 bed temperature 60 out of 60 tool head temperature 199 out of 200 our elapsed time 4 hours 9 minutes now down here we have other controls heat percentage baby step and more and if we come in here to percentage you can see I have increased the speed of the printer by 150 percent so let's zoom out here Oops. Zoom out, I said. Yes, there we go. Zoom out. Oh, come on. There we go. So this is the speed. at a, This is what it looks like at 150%. Let me take it down to 100%. This is what it looks like at 100% speed. And now let's see, uh, let's see how high it'll go. Oh, it'll go over 300%, but I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm going to tune it back down to 150% is about where I feel safe. Also in here, we have fan and extrusion controls. Oh, you can't see that. Let me zoom you back in. So I said also here we have fan and extrusion controls. We have our baby step controls. And interestingly, this is the only place that I have found in the menu to set the baby steps, which is, you know, that is your Z offset. There is a, a bed leveling thing that we'll talk about after this print's done, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have Z offset or baby stepping in it. That, I find that very curious because that's obviously, you know, one of the big parts of setting up your printer. So also from this menu, we have heat and we can change the nozzle heat or the bed heat, which is very nice. So we can adjust all this stuff you know, while the print is going on. So I'm going to let our gigantic Benchy complete. And we'll be back. To talk more about the Mingda Magician Pro 2. Well, we're not quite at the end yet. We are, however. Focus. 12 hours in, in 4, 3, 2, 1, bing, 12 hours in. Well, there she is. 
it took almost 16 hours to print but it's done now you notice there is a quite a bit of stringing in there that's a slicer setting that has nothing to do with the printer yeah that looks fantastic let's see if we can get it off the plate here oh yeah came off really nice look at that that first layer is excellent Ooh. we got a little bit of ghosting on the back side but other than that yeah that looks great and it had no trouble you know doing that whatsoever everything about this printer seems to be very well done you see the blue LED in there that changes color depending on how hot the hot end is I'm not quite certain you know what the levels are it's not mentioned in the manual and this is a brand new printer so hopefully in the commercial version that will become more available everything like I said is very nice everything is done well they planned it they've laid it out so it looks nice look at how well the ribbon cable and everything just fits into place it's secured underneath with little clamps everything is well done professional looking heavy duty yeah no complaints at all about this printer other than the fact that it is large so I thought that before we said goodbye we could take a better look here at the menu items so this is the main menu when there is nothing going on with the printer you see we have preheat we can select uh, PLA PETG TPU we can heat both the hotbed and the extruder just the hotbed just the extruder we have a stop we have some settings controls where we can adjust those quite nice here we have our nozzle temperature controls we can adjust it however we want hotbed controls we have our leveling controls our main menu which has our move our home our extrude our percentages where we can control speed and flow uh, fan controls and the baby stepping which you know like I said should really be under the leveling menu and it does have this nice little info window here which I'm sure is really hard for you guys to see there that's the best I can do so if we said something like preheat PLA you can see the extruder is heating up but there's no more no more info there available so if you are looking for a large format printer what would be considered helmet class and one that is really really well constructed and put together I urge you to check out the Mingda Magician Pro 2 400 cubic millimeters of build volume heavy-duty construction they've got things done right here all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to mingda for sending this out to us that's it i'm out peace